educator at clear is let's start with today's prelims question challenge question number 1 the periodic labor force survey is carried out by option a ministry of labor option b national sample survey office option c national statistical office and option d world bank question number 2 Which of the following statements is or are correct regarding Maternity Benefits Amendment Act 2017? 1. Pregnant women are entitled for 3 months pre-delivery and 3 months post-delivery paid leave. 2. Enterprises with crèche must allow the mother minimum 6 crèche visits daily. 3. Women with 2 children get reduced entitlements. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. Option A 1 and 2 only. Option B, two only. C, three only. And D, one, two, and three. Question number three: Labor force participation rate is the percentage of persons in labor force which includes option A, working people; option B, those seeking work; C, those available for work; and option D, all the above. Comment your answers in the comment box. Now it's time for today's main question challenge. Question number one. India's labor force participation rate is much low and is declining. What are various reasons for low labor force participation of women in India? Suggest some measures to correct the labor market's gender skew. Question 2. The inability for women to participate in the labor force is the outcome of various economic and social factors that interact in a complex fashion. Examine. Question number 3. Since the women's economic engagement is related to her own and her family's well-being, the continuing decline in women's labor force participation is a cause for concern. Discuss. Also, enumerate various measures by the government to improve the women's labor force participation rate. Today's questions are related to the female labor force participation in India. This topic comes under General Studies 1, 2 and 3. of the upsc main syllabus it may come under general studies 1 under it role of women and women's organizations population and associated issues poverty and developmental issues urbanization their problems and remedies it may come under paper 3 of the upsc main syllabus that is general studies 2 under it issues related to women it also comes under paper 4 that is general studies 3 under it indian economy and related issues this topic is quite important since women related issues are among the favorite areas of upsc so let's discuss this topic in detail now under the heads the definition of labor force participation rate significance of labor force participation rate statistics of female labor force participation in india causes or factors behind low female labor force participation rate need of increasing women's labor force participation measures required to increase women's labor force participation government's initiatives and conclusion first of all let's know what is the meaning of labor force participation rate labor force participation rate is defined as the section of working population in the age group of 16 to 64 in the economy currently employed seeking employment or available for employment people who are still undergoing studies housewives and persons above the age of 64 are not reckoned in the labor force next is significance of labor force participation rate it is a measure to evaluate working age population in an economy this is an important metric when the economy is not growing or is in the face of recession During recession the labor force participation rate generally goes down because of low economic activity which causes fewer jobs across the country the labor force participation rate is also important in understanding the unemployment rate in the economy consistent analysis of the unemployment rate in the economy is very important if labor force participation rate is on the higher side it's a good sign but if it's on the lower side it can act as a warning sign for the economy Now let's know the current statistics of female labor force participation rate in India. According to International Labor Organization's report of 2019, 1.3 billion women were in work in 2018 as compared to 2 billion men, a less than 2% improvement in last 27 years. This report highlighted that women are paid 20% lower than men as a global average. 
women remain underrepresented at the top a situation that has changed very little in the last 30 years the female labor force participation rate in india has been one of the lowest in the world as per data from world bank the female labor force participation rate in india fell from around 31% in 2011 to 12 to close to 21% in 2019 this decline has been sharp in rural areas less than a third of women are working or actively looking for a job the female labor force participation rate in india had fallen to 20.3% in 2019 from more than 26% in 2005 Female labor force participation rate in India fell to 15.5 in 2020 when India imposed strict lockdown to curb the spread of COVID-19. Most employed women in India are in low-skilled work such as farm and factory labor and domestic help, sectors that have been hit hard by the pandemic. The unemployment rate among women had touched 15.8% compared with 12.6% among men workers in the second quarter of 2020. At 21%, India has one of the lowest female labor participation rates in the world. In other words, 79% of Indian women aged 16 years and above do not even seek work. Countries like China, US, Indonesia and even Bangladesh have two to three times higher participation rates for women. India's 21% female labor force participation rate is not even half of the global average which is 47%. Now let's see different factors behind low or declining female labor force participation rate. 1. Low social acceptability of women working outside the household. India's societal norms are such that women are expected to take the responsibility of family care and child care. This stereotype is a critical barrier to women's labor force participation. Social norms about household work are against women's mobility and participation in paid work. Even today, in many traditional families, quitting work is a necessary precondition to the wedding itself. 2. Lack of opportunities the problem of labor demand constraints or lack of suitable job opportunities is acute for women in India, with a fall in the availability of farm jobs and the lack of economic opportunities in non-farm employment. The scarcity of decent and suitable jobs for women are quite evident. So, most women in India are engaged in subsistence level work in agriculture in rural areas. In urban areas, it is the low-paying jobs such as domestic service and petty home-based manufacturing. 3. Lack of access to safe and secure workspace. Lack of sanitation. Concerns about safety and harassment at workplace, both explicit and implicit. Disproportionate long working hours. Lesser job security are some of the reasons which contribute to low female workforce participation rate. 4. Prevalence of poor and unequal wages. Irrespective of employment category, whether it is casual or regular or salaried, organized or unorganized sectors and location, women workers in India are paid a lower wage rate. The gender pay gap is 34% in India, that is, women get 34% less compared to men for performing the same job with same qualifications. In the organized sector, women professionals, even in the highest ranks of labor, such as legislators, senior officials and managers, are also paid less compared to their male counterparts. However, these women constitute only 1% of the total female workforce and the gap is lowest as they are aware of their rights. The wage difference is lesser for more skilled workers and more for semi-skilled or unskilled workers. Across enterprise type, wage difference is less for government or public sector. Large pay gaps in terms of average daily wages exist in male and female wage rates of casual and regular workers in rural and urban areas and the gap is narrower for regular workers in urban areas. On the other hand, for casual workers, the wage gap is narrower in rural areas. 5. Women Education There is a negative relationship between women education and labor force participation rate. Data from the National Sample Survey Office show that education and employment have a U-shaped relationship, that is, a rise and subsequent decline in employment with the rise in education levels. Work participation drops sharply for women with primary and secondary education and rises only with college-level education. With better education, women are refusing to do casual wage labor or work in family farms and enterprises. 
Educated women prefer salaried jobs, but such jobs remain extremely limited for women. For example, among people of 25 to 59 years, working as farmers, farm laborers, and service workers, nearly a third are women. On the other hand, proportion of women among salaried jobs such as professionals and managers is only about 15%. 6 unpaid work the time spent on unpaid economic activities especially on unpaid care and domestic core has hindered women's participation in the labor force childbirth and taking care for children and elderly parents make women drop off the employment pipeline 7 digital divide in india in 2019 internet users were 67% men and 33% women and this gap is even bigger in rural areas this has become a barrier for women to access critical education, health and financial services or to achieve success in activities or sectors that are becoming more digitized. 8. Technological Disruption Women hold most of the administrative and data processing roles that artificial intelligence and other technologies threaten to usurp. This will lead to loss of jobs for women. 9. Gender Bias Constraints in the form of casteist and patriarchal notions of purity and pollution prohibit women from certain jobs, especially in the food processing, sericulture and garment industries. 10. Impact of COVID-19 Owing to COVID-19, global women employment is 19% more at risk than men employment, as per ILO estimates. Loss of jobs in the informal sector caused by the pandemic likely to have pushed many women out of work. In the World Economic Forum's Global Gender Gap Index, India slipped to 112th place simply because over 70 lakh Indian women have dropped out of work. 11. Improvement in Family Income With increase in family income, women leave the work to take care of the family. The major pull-down is among the rural women as per the reports of the central government. By withdrawing women from labor force, men or the family can avoid the stigma of laboring women. 12. Maternity and Child Care Many women are unable to rejoin the workforce after having a child due to her childhood responsibilities and lack of crush. The landmark legislation which entitles a woman to 26 weeks of paid maternity leave has become a big hurdle because this increased the cost for companies and so it discourages them from hiring women. 13. Structural transformation of Indian agriculture due to farm mechanization results in lower demand for female agricultural laborers. 14. Increasing crimes against children inside and outside house also makes parents think that at least one parent should stay at home. Being a patriarchal society, the burden obviously comes to the woman. 15. Underreporting. The most women in India work and and contribute to the economy in one form or another but much of the work is not documented or accounted for in official statistics that is women's work tends to be under reported 16 lack of gender related data globally major gaps in gender data and the lack of trend data make it hard to monitor progress in india too significant gaps in data on the girl child prevent a systemic longitudinal assessment of the lives of girls 17 other factors lack of sanitation unsafe traveling poor child care facilities and care homes for the elderly also contributes to lower participation of women in workforce. Is there a need of increasing women's labor force participation? Yes, of course. Let's discuss the needs or advantages of increasing women's labor force participation rate. The World Bank says that no country can develop and achieve its full potential if half of its population is locked in non-remunerative, less productive and non-economic activities. World Economic Forum's Global Gender Gap Report estimates that raising women's participation in the labor force can increase India's GDP significantly. It contributes to women empowerment. The declining women's labor force participation, gender pay gap, high rates of informal work with lack of social security are seen as impediments to the goal of gender equality and women empowerment in India. Empowering women in the economy and closing gender gaps in the world of work are key Key to achieving the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals. 
particularly goal 5 to achieve gender equality goal 8 to promote full and productive employment and decent work for all also goal 1 on ending poverty goal 2 on food security goal 3 on ensuring health and goal 10 on reducing inequalities next growth of economy when more women work economies grow women's economic empowerment boosts productivity increases economic diversification and income equality in addition to other positive development outcomes if more women do paid work india's national income would rise dramatically one estimate is that gdp would go up by 20 percent if women matched men in workforce participation when more people are earning more money gets circulated increasing female workforce participation will help to reap the benefits of demographic dividend from its large and youthful labor force Financial inclusion of women contributes to institutional profit and also reduces risk, increases transparency and also adds stability for the entire economy. It will enhance women's control over household decision making. Women's economic empowerment to be the best available weapon against poverty. Economically autonomous women can walk away from abuse. Gender equality reduces violence of all kinds. Next is measures required to increase female labor force participation rate. One, facilitates women's access to decent work by providing public services. Public services should be made gender responsive, such as free and accessible toilets, household water connections, safe and secure public transport, adequate lighting and CCTV cameras in public spaces, efficient law and order mechanism. 2. Ensure equal and decent wages, fair and decent living wages and social security, such as maternity and sickness benefits, provident fund, pension, etc. should be ensured. Ensure women's equal rights and entitlements over land and access to inputs, credits, markets and extension services. Fiscal incentives. Women have a higher elasticity of labor supply than men. Lower income taxes for women can incentivize their participation. Child care subsidies should be provided to free up mother's time to enter the labor force which would have significant implications in increasing female employment. Child care subsidies can also have positive spillover effects on the education of young girls for they no longer have to be left behind to take care of their younger siblings. Encouraging women entrepreneurship. This will provide a long-term solution as it creates many job opportunities. By creating jobs, fueling innovation and furthering investment in health and education, entrepreneurship among women could transform India's economy and society. Bridging the digital divide. Partnerships between the public and private sectors will be most effective to address this. Next is Political Empowerment of Women For improving conditions of women, their representation in parliament and in decision-making roles in public spheres is a must. Creating more flexible work choices such as family-friendly policies, work from home, paid maternity leave, which makes seamless work-life integration possible for women, can improve women labor force participation. Next is Skill Development Training and mentoring programs improve the employability of women. Government policies should focus on behavioral changes that make female employment more acceptable in the society. Childcare should be acknowledged as the responsibility of both the parents. Next is prioritizing gender statistics. A UN Women Initiative called Making Every Woman and Girl Count was launched in 2016 to help prioritize gender data. Ensure regular production of quality and comparable gender statistics and ensure that data are accessible and used to inform policy. There is a need to incorporate such an initiative in India too. Lastly, address specific needs of migrant workers, Dalits, tribals, Muslims and other marginalized communities. Now we will be discussing different government initiatives in this regard. A new ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship has been established to coordinate the skill development schemes across various sectors. Government has also implemented the National Career Service Project which comprises a digital portal that provides a nationwide online platform for job seekers and employers for job matching in a dynamic, efficient and responsive manner and has a repository of career content. 
enactment of the maternity benefit amendment act of 2017 which provides for enhancement in paid maternity leave from 12 weeks to 26 weeks and provision of crash facility in establishments having 50 or more employees issue of advisory to the states under the factories act 1948 for permitting women workers in the night shifts with adequate safety measures further in order to enhance the employability of women workers the government is providing training to them through a network of women industrial training institutes national vocational training institutes and regional vocational training institutes a number of protective provisions have been incorporated in various labor laws for creating congenial work environment for women workers The Equal Remuneration Act of 1976 provides for payment of equal remuneration to men and women workers for same work or work of similar nature without any discrimination. Further, under the provisions of the Minimum Wages Act 1948, the wages fixed by the appropriate government are equally applicable to both male and female workers and the act does not discriminate on the basis of gender. Also, There are different government initiatives to tackle unemployment which include Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme Credit Guarantee Scheme for Micro Small and Medium Enterprises Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana etc Coming to the conclusion women need 3 Cs confidence capabilities and access to capital men need to understand that women are their equals Economic results are best when men and women work in gender balanced way whether at work or at home there is a need to address the structural issues to keep women entering and staying in the workforce so that's about women labor force participation in india we have discussed almost everything that you need to know about this topic now see the questions once again question number 1 the periodic labor force survey is carried out by option a ministry of labor option b national sample survey office option c national statistical office and option d world bank question number 2 which of the following statements is or are correct regarding maternity benefits amendment act 2017 1 pregnant women are entitled for 3 months pre delivery and 3 months post delivery paid leave 2 Enterprises with crash must allow the mother minimum 6 crash visits daily. 3. Women with 2 children get reduced entitlements. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. Option A 1 and 2 only. Option B 2 only. C 3 only and D 1 2 and 3. Question number 3. Labor force participation rate is the percentage of persons in labor force which includes Option A working people option b those seeking work c those available for work and option d all the above question number 1 india's labor force participation rate is much low and is declining what are various reasons for low labor force participation of women in india suggest some measures to correct the labor market's gender skew question 2 the inability for women to participate in the labor force is the outcome of various economic and social factors that interact in a complex fashion examine question number 3 since the women's economic engagement is related to her own and her family's well-being the continuing decline in women's labor force participation is a cause for concern discuss also enumerate various measures by the government to improve the women's labor force participation rate i hope everyone is now able to answer questions related to this topic that's for today see you with another set of questions from a new topic in the next video if you like this video subscribe our channel and support us thank you